Now, the Prime Minister is announcing the launch of a new National Science and Technology Council today. That's What's right. that all about? Well, that's really trying to coordinate uh, science policy across government uh, a little bit uh, more effectively. Uh, you will know that uh, as business secretary, uh, I'm responsible for a large part of the science budget. But what the Prime Minister thinks and I think is a good idea is having someone of the calibre of Sir Patrick Vallance uh, sitting uh, at the head of this council so that we can coordinate uh, science policy uh, more effectively across government. And I think it's a good, uh, welcome development. It's interesting how many of the people who've been instrumental in our policy on COVID and lockdown policy are being given some rather super duper long term new jobs, isn't it? Well, Sir Patrick Vallance is a really uh, respected I know. Uh, uh, medic. He's a respected uh, academic and practitioner. Uh, and I think he'll do the, the new role uh, very well. Um, let's also talk about uh, where we are today. It should have been Freedom Day, uh, June the 21st. It's a date circled in many of our calendars in <laughs> Sharpie. Right. I'm sure it was for yours as well. That's right. Um, we're told um, that we this is decision to extend by four weeks is about exercising caution. You're the business secretary. Is this a cautious move for businesses? Look, I think, uh, I think you're right if you're suggesting that people have been frustrated, fully understand that. It was a finely balanced uh, decision uh, to uh, delay by four weeks, but I think it was the right one. Uh, I remember looking at the data with cabinet colleagues, with the prime minister. Uh, it was finely balanced, but we felt that uh, an, a bit of extra time would not only allow us uh, to vaccinate more people, but also uh, it would allow us to see how effective the vaccine was against the Delta variant. Uh, and that was something which at the time the decision was made uh, wasn't clear. So it was a very difficult decision that all the business people I speak to, um, you know, were very anxious uh, to, to open. But they've always said to me, uh, Julia, that they would much rather wait a little bit than have to open uh, uh, reopen and then have they, come, have they said that because I don't meet any they've business owners that. who they've say all that. Said that what what people are what business people really don't want is a situation where we open up uh and we have to do another lockdown and well, you would hate that as well you we would don't, absolutely when when do we have to do another lockdown Mr Quartet no, no 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 I'm not saying we will but no I'm no no that... we say you use the term opening up and then we might you know again and then if if cases went up deaths went up we'd have to that's do right. another have to we so never, that's what no, no, Mr. Quartet, we never have to do another lockdown. It's a political decision. No, no, decision. we won't do one. It, we won't look, do one. So what happened last year, you will remember, is that we opened up uh, and then and then we had to go back into a lockdown. No, we didn't have Businesses, to go back into lockdown. We opened okay, up on July the 4th, well, we, last well, summer, and then we went into another lockdown in November. What happened in all those months in between? I think the lockdown was in December, but anyway, by the by. No, the lockdown was in November. I'm so sorry. Okay. For, the lock, okay. we, had a, we had lockdown two in November and then we went okay. into lockdown again on January the 4th. Do you not remember? I think you're right. I, I remember it as December, but I think you're right. I don't want to argue about that. But anyway, um, <laughs> that's, right. what, that's exactly what um, people want to avoid. We have to be safe. Uh, we've all, always no, we can been avoid cautious. that. No, I'm so sorry. This narrative that, well, you know, if we stay locked down for a little bit longer, we're being cautious and we're avoiding the option of having another lockdown in the autumn. Um, a, it is a political decision to lock down. It is never unavoidable. Um, states in America that chose not to lock down, like Texas and Florida, or came out early. Sweden never locked down. Look at their death rates, their case rates compared to ours. I have to say, I can't see any evidence that lockdowns are saving lives there. But 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 this is the thing. Um, do we know yet what the measurement would be in terms of us uh, going into lockdown again? Because you know, I mean, we can talk about no, but we can lockdown. talk about measures like a new say, national science and technology council. But frankly, that counts for absolutely nothing if if businesses are stopped from making money and we're spending billions on paying people not going to work on the furlough scheme and 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 people have got bounce bank loans they can't pay and the government's having to write off that debt on their behalf. But we've got last June. At the time when it was announced that we were going to come out on the 4th of July, we had 59 deaths a day and 353 daily hospital admissions for COVID. Right now, we have around 10 deaths a day and only 177 daily hospital admissions is the most recent figures. So we're better than we were last summer. What would the figures have to be in the autumn or the winter for us to lock down or not to lock down? Do you know? There's not going to be another lockdown. We're going to reopen on the 19th of July. And I'm very, very confident of that. You're confident of it. Um, and if we did lock down again, would you resign? I don't think we're going to lock down again. Well, then, OK, so you'd be happy to commit that you would resign from government if we lock down again. 
I'm not going to say to you that I'm going to resign under such and such a circumstances Why wouldn't uh, you? whatsoever. Um, but I would, I would say that I think we're going to reopen on the 19th of July, and that's what I'm focused on. We're going to reopen on the 19th of July, and you say there's not going to be another lockdown. Why is it that the health secretary hasn't given that commitment? Why is it that the prime minister hasn't given that commitment? Why is the deputy chief medical officer, um, Susan Hopkins, talking about the predicting further lockdowns this winter? I think that we are focused on reopening on the 19th of July. That's 100% of my focus. That's not an answer to my question, with all due respect. Well, I've said what I've said. Uh, I, I'd, very, I'd be very surprised if there was a lockdown. I don't think there will be one. And I'm focused on the 19th of July. Um, in terms of the caution we're told we're exercising, you, you know as well as I do that we've got you know millions of people still on furlough. We've got um, hundreds of thousands of businesses that are struggling. They're not being given any extra help. The furlough scheme, they're going to have to pay an extra uh, 10% towards furlough uh, from uh, the beginning of July, and then it goes up to 20% in August. Uh, of course, we've got you know business rates uh, and VAT exemptions and things for many industries. They're ending. Uh, the rent moratorium eventually will end. We've got people with business uh, bounce-back loans of course, they haven't had a chance to bounce back. A lot of those uh, firms still closed. A lot of them uh, still unable to break even. Um, do you think that that business and the economy is going to recover uh, from all of this? And, and if so, when? I, I really do, Julia, because actually a lot of the data, a lot of the um, data from organisations like the IMF, the OECD, all of them have actually been very positive for the UK. The, the sentiment uh, behind the UK's reopening. It was Brexit, which I know you were a passionate supporter of. Uh, we've got trade deals uh, coming uh, all around the world. There's huge confidence, actually, uh, in, much greater confidence in investing in Britain. I speak to uh, foreign investors a great deal. And they're very interested in committing uh, their resources to the UK, uh, making uh, jobs here, uh, investing in businesses. And I think the sentiment behind the UK is actually quite positive at the moment. Um, and yet, just finally, just I know you know we you had a rather a rather bad showing at the uh, uh, the uh, Cheshire yeah. and Amersham and Bow election last week. Um, Liberal Democrats took what had been a very safe Tory seat uh, under Cheryl Gillan. Um, next, we got a by election in Batley and Spen, and after the the victory in Hartlepool, a lot of people in the Tory party really quite optimistic. Um, there seems to be a little bit of concern now that actually these poll ratings that the Tories have got aren't quite as solid as they look and they're a bit shakier and that perhaps Boris Johnson's safe hand on the tiller isn't looking so steady anymore. Look, I think that, uh, and you'll remember this, uh, midterm uh, elections, by-elections for governments tend to be very challenging. And last week uh, wasn't any different. Uh, I think there were local uh, circumstances, there were national issues as well, which made it uh, difficult for us. I think next week we'll have a huge challenge. Uh, to win Batley and Spen, and it's something that, that will be very difficult for us. And we've got to remember that, uh, as I've said, midterm by-elections generally, uh, sitting governments uh, find them difficult yeah. and they often lose them. It's very rare for a sitting government to win seats off the opposition uh, in, in, in midterm, as happened in Hartlepool six weeks ago. Um, can I just also ask you finally about this uh, the the, uh, the Euro Championships? Of course, we had England yeah. playing Scotland on Friday. Now, a bit of a damp squib of an event. It um, was not a very good football match. I watched the whole thing, and uh, I must say, I, I wasn't desperately excited by it. No, exactly. Well, we missed the last ten minutes because the feed in the pub went down. But there we are. <laughs> I don't think we missed anything. But um, there's a lot of talk about these UEFA officials, sponsors, and general rich hangers-on who want to come over for the final at Wembley uh, in July um, without having to self-isolate, without having to obey all the rules that the rest of us have to obey. Massive impact on our travel industry, massive impact on our lives. Um, should that be allowed? Should they be allowed to come here? Huge, huge impact for us having that, world, that European Cup final here. But should that be allowed? I think um, it's up to UEFA and also uh, health uh, officials as well within the government to, to work out uh, whether people can be permitted to come. I mean, I understand that there are some exceptions uh, diplomatic exceptions, for example. Yeah, sponsors um, of a football match aren't diplomats, though, are they? Well, I mean, that's uh, an, a matter for uh, the, the organisers of the tournament. I mean, if the Do you not have a personal opinion on it? I, I, I tend to think that uh, people should follow the rules, but there they can be exceptions. Should everybody yeah, everyone should follow the rules? The rules but there people, can be G7 I mean, summit leaders, for instance? I think if you're negotiating an international treaty um, and, and you get permission from the country that you're going to, I think that's 
um, a, a legitimate exception. But a foot, and what about a football match? Is a football match a legitimate exception? Because an awful lot of people aren't allowed to travel to see families right now. They can't afford to self isolate yeah, for a week. They uh, they can't afford to, all the jabs alone. And and yet, if you're if you're very rich and you work at a company that is sponsoring a big football match, as much as I love my football, you'd be allowed under this plan. You'd be allowed to travel in freely without having any of those restrictions. If the restrictions are there to keep us safe, and we're told they are, I don't believe they most of these restrictions aren't necessary to keep us safe. But we're told they are. Surely they apply to everybody. Uh, that's not my uh, decision. Uh, what I would say is that uh, there have been some exceptions. Uh, I've had uh, done international travel as business secretary because I'm trying to secure investment into this country uh, and was exempted from, from quarantine. Um, and and there, there are exceptions. OK, Kwasi Kwarteng, I really, really appreciate you joining us. Uh, he's a business secretary. Appreciate you, you, you taking the time to talk to us.